Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, Outlander season two, episode one came out. And I'm not even lying, I cried. <laughs> just, like, I cried, like, probably four or five times. Um, just out of just excitement and, oh my god, just surprise and just a lot of shit happened and I was really excited. I love this show. It's so fucking amazing. If you don't watch a show and you came across this review and you just, it's like, oh, I'm just, I'll see what this is about. If you haven't watched the show yet, go watch it. It's amazing. Like, Outlander the series is... I've never read the books. Never read them. But this series is fantastic. And it gives me chills. So, let's get started. First, can we please just talk about, quickly, how beautiful Katarina Bell? I always say her name wrong. I know. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry. I think it's Katarina, but it looks like it's spelled like Katarina. I'm sure I'm saying her name wrong. Sorry, but she's freaking just beyond gorgeous. I can't even deal with it. Like looking at her is just, it's just fascinating. Like she's absolutely beautiful. She seems like a really, really sweet and nice and intelligent person. And I just fucking love her. And she plays Claire, just, she's such a great actress, I just can't with her. So the episode starts with her back at the Stones, I forgot what it's called, and she obviously fell back through time, and when I saw it, and she like started screaming, I was just like, oh, no, this bitch, no, she is not back in 1940." whatever year it was, 48, I think. Like, no way, this can't be happening. No! And I started crying. <laughs> I did. I started crying because I was like, no, Jamie! No! Why are you back over there? No, no, no! This can't be happening. No! You're supposed to be with Jamie and his red hair and his kilt. He needs you. What are you doing? <laughs> And it just really, really, like, made me sad. It'll st it still makes me sad to think about. But either which way, she's back in 1940, so she's, like, walking down the street, and then a car pulls up, and then I started crying again, because it was, like, confirmation. I was like, shit, she really is back in the 40s. God damn it. And I started crying again. And she kind of just, like, freaked out. And then we see her, like... Frank walks up. Oh my god. <laughs> I started crying again. <laughs> I swear, like, I cried the first, like, 30 minutes, probably four or five times. Because <laughs> it was just, it was a mix of, like, shock and sadness. You know, like, I, like, when I started crying for Frank, I felt bad because we know how much he, like, seriously went, like, guns, guns blazing, like, looked for her, and he was just so sad. And seeing him walk up, he was so excited and so happy, like, you're back, I'm so happy to see you, like, I love you, like, I, I was searching for you for the longest, what the fuck, you know? And then it, like, pans over to her face, and she's got a mix of just sadness and, I think, fear, too. Um, because Blackjack Randall really put her and Jamie just through hell and i cannot imagine seeing frank after dealing with all of that especially with what happened in last season's uh, the see the season finale with jamie and black Dark, like oh like there's a moment where frank like goes to like touch her and she like pulls back which is totally understandable but he doesn't really get it cuz he doesn't know what happened. And I could not imagine being in that position. That would be terrible. And watching it was just like my heart was stopping. I was like, oh my god. This can't be fucking happening right now. Like, that's what I was thinking the entire time. 
and I was sad for her, and I was sad for him, and then I was sad for Jamie, and back in my head, I was like, what the fuck is happening with Jamie? Where'd he go? And, I mean, obviously, at this point, he's dead, because they're in the 40s, but then it's kind of weird, because it's like, but if she were to go back in time, he'd still be alive, you know, it, it's just strange, you know. Anyways, moving on, so, they decide to, well, Claire asks to see Mrs. Graham? I gotta, I can't remember her name either. Like, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I'm just, well, oh, my hair, I'm just fucking excited, and I, there's a lot of emotions going right now, and I can't remember anybody's name. Either which way, it was the couple from season one who they stayed with. I know, I, I suck, I forgot their name, sorry. I'm just really excited. I can't believe this happened! Oh my god. What the fuck? <sighs> Poor Jamie and Frank and Claire. Anyways, so she tells Mrs. Graham about everything. Well, I don't know if she tells her about everything, but I do know that a week goes by and Claire is going through all of Mrs. Graham's husband. I forgot his name. I'm sorry again goes through all of his books about, you know, like, the Jacobite Rebellion and all of that. I think she's just trying to find, you know, find out if Jamie lived or died on the battlefield. Um, but, yeah, so she does all that, and, you know, Mrs. Graham, she knows some, there's, she knows something happened. I can't remember if she knows exactly everything, but I do know that she knows about Jamie, and I do know that she knows that he has a really nice head of hair. Which he does, so. And it was really sad seeing Claire talk about Jamie's hair. Because she's like, he had the most beautiful head of red hair. And she started crying, and I started crying again. Oh, I was just like, he does. He has the most beautiful set of red hair. He totally does. And that's what I did. But yeah, so crazy because Claire ends up telling Frank about everything. And then she goes on to tell him that she's pregnant. Ah, and he, like, has an emotional breakdown, which is understandable. He just was given this huge, crazy clusterfuck of information that is just insane. That most people would probably be like, you're definitely mentally ill. You need to go to a hospital. But instead, he was like, you know what? I believe you. It's cool. Whatever. But then she tells him that she's pregnant, and he was like, this is too much. Like a tsunami of feels just attacked him and he was drowning for sure. And so was I. I was like, no, she totally is pregnant. I forgot. And now Frank is sad. And now I'm sad. And I was just sad the entire time. I was like, no, this is terrible. It was just so emotional for me. It really was. Like I said, I'm not a book reader. Well, I read books, but I've never read the Outlander series, which I plan on doing after this, the actual show series is finished. I don't want it to ruin my excitement for the show. But, so I don't know any of this stuff that's happening. This is all shocking and new to me, so bear with me. Because I'm really excited <laughs> and sad. <laughs> I feel like I'm going crazy. But this show, it, this, it'll do it to you. This show is so great. It really is. Fucking airplane. So that all happens. She tells him about everything. And then there comes a point where Frank is like, you know what? We can raise this baby. I'll be its father. We can be together. Live happy. But I have some, I have some rules. You know, like there's some shit that we need to agree upon right now. And one of those things was she's got to completely forget Jamie. Completely. She has to just let go of everything and just move on. Um, and I totally understand where he's coming from. I'm sure I would say the same exact thing. That would be one of my rules as well. Um, Frank is a really great guy, obviously. It's just Blackjack Randall is such a little fucking piece of shit that it's just hard to look at him and not see that loser. But... She agrees, and 
I mean, she's really got no other choice. Here she is pregnant with someone else's man, or someone else's man, with someone else's child. And here's Frank, who's a really good guy, who loves her, who's, who missed her. And, I mean, what, what else can she do, you know? So, they get in a plane and they go back and all this stuff. And it's really kind of, it's a cool little, like, transitioning because she's coming off the plane. She goes to grab Frank's hand. And then it transitions to her grabbing Jamie's hand. And I was like, ah, yay, Jamie. So we're going back in time. And I was just like crying again because I love Jamie. <laughs> and they're in Paris. They just landed. Well, not landed, but they just, you know, their ship has landed or whatever. <laughs> just so fucking excited. And just basically they're talking about being in Paris. And Murtaugh is really funny. I love him. I think he's really sexy, too. I love a man with a full beard. <laughs> Anyways, so there's this little moment where they're, like, in the hotel or apartment, whatever, and Jamie is talking about how sometimes he could still feel Black Jack's hands on him, and I could not imagine what he's going through. That would suck. That would be terrible. And it, I cried again. <laughs> Like I said, I cried a lot in this episode because just remembering what happened in that episode, just, ugh, it's just so emotional and just so sad and I just, it makes me feel bad for him. And she told him, she's like, no, I'm here, we're together and we need to forget about everything that happened and focus on what we need to be doing right now, right here in Paris. And that is preventing the Jacobite Rebellion. And so they create a plan. They go to tell Murtaugh, but they can't really tell him too much. Because... I mean, it's a lot to handle. I mean, think about it. If somebody told you that they flew back in time from the 1940s all the way to whenever it is, then, I mean, you'd probably be like, you're fucking crazy. However, unless you're a fan of the show, you'd probably be like, oh my god, that's amazing. I want to do this too. You probably knew Jamie. You know, like if you're a fan of the show, that's probably how you'd react. But other people would probably be like, you need to go to a mental institution. I wouldn't. I'd be like, well, show me where you did this because I wanted to do it too. I want to go back in time. That's such, like, that's so plausible. It totally could happen. Other people would be like, no, that definitely could never happen. So they don't tell Murtaugh the entire thing, but they do tell him a little bit. The whole thing where they tell Jamie's cousin, I think it is, and their whole plan and how they want to be a part of it. And basically at first their co his cousin's like a little iffy, but then they show him Jamie's scars on the, his back and he's like, you know what? I can tell you guys are definitely down and let's do this. And that's putting it lightly, because there's a lot more that is said, but I'm just kind of, for time's sake, just kind of throwing it all in there a little bit. And so it's interesting because they go and then they go to the port and there's a small plot, a smallpox breakout. And this one guy, this one French dude with a wig on, and he is pissed because Claire tells them, look, this dude has smallpox. We need to quarantine him like crazy, and that's that. Well, this guy came from this French guy's ship, and basically the French guy's ship is going to get burnt down. Everything, all the cargo, all of it is going to be burnt, and, I mean, it has smallpox on it, so what other option is there? Well, this French dude in the wig is pissed, because that's a lot of money, and basically Claire and Jamie are like, listen, dude, we did what we could. I love it because the French people, they were being kind of rude to Claire, and Jamie was not having that, which I really love. And so he was telling everybody, he's like, you need to respect my fucking wife, bitch, or else we're going to have a huge issue. I'm about to go off. And I love Jamie for that, because he is all about talk to my wife res with respect or get your ass beat. And I love that about him with his red hair. I love Jamie so much. He's so sexy. So is Murtaugh. I'm super excited for this. Like, it, I... 
I'm having a hard time right now even just doing this review because I'm just so excited. Like, how could you not? If you watched last season, then you know exactly the excitement I'm feeling. And if you don't, then I'm sorry. But I'm really pumped. I can't wait for the next episode. It could not come faster. This season, I've been waiting for this season for what feels like 105 years. And I'm just really excited that it's back. Ugh, tell me what you thought in the comments of the new episode. Tell me what your predictions are for this upcoming season. And tell me if you cried as much as I did during this episode. <laughs> so I don't feel like such a loser. <laughs> all right, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.